I'm gonna start already. Yeah. I'm gonna start unboxing now. Here's the coffee. What? What's this? I already recorded. What do you mean? Yeah. Just kidding. We'll watch it this time. Well, like with everything nowadays, everything is like delayed. This got held in Panama. Let's see if, if it lives up to the hype. Need to be careful too, not to like. Look at that. The box already, or at least gives away what model we're going to review. Well, if they click on this video, they already know the thumbnail. So what's what's the point of like trying to drum up anticipation, right? True. <laughs> Whatever. 3439 module. International warranty. We're not gonna bother with that for sure. Still wrapped inside. Already. Nice pillow. And there's already markings also. What did it say? Fine resin cushioning. Yeah, of course. Like you did. This is like an exposition dump. And there it is. And I'm already feeling the lightness. Wow. Thanks. Gone. Coffee. Of course. Obviously. Oh. Wow. Just look at. That does look really nice. There's an alternating finish on it. Is the clasp also titanium? Oh, this is not, definitely not your typical G-Shock. Wow, I'm very impressed. Oh my goodness. Designer note, subject 143. In our initial video a month ago, I mentioned that I wish I could afford one of these before it sells out. From the initial images, I knew right away I need one, but I could afford one. Thankfully, you all changed that. Your views generated enough revenue for the channel to pre-order one. So like what we said in the previous video, this titanium square G-Shock has many similarities with Gundam's popular design aesthetics and it's now here on our table for a direct comparison. All made possible by your loyal viewership. Thank you. So now we're going to take a closer examination of its many features and show you the many reasons why this is the greatest G-Shock Square ever made that may not be for you. The case dimensions are 49.3 mm by 43.2 mm. The thickness is 13 mm, but its total weight is just 104 grams. While the dimensions are identical to the full steel square, this is about 37% lighter due to its full titanium build. This, however, triples in price because of the application of diamond like carbon coating, laser etch specifications, and sapphire crystal. It also features a uniquely molded and milled out bezel and bracelet construction. It's a special variation of the best-selling metal collection of G-Shock Squares. Admittedly, this is the first time I've ever handled a titanium G-Shock, but I have experienced many titanium watches before. It is a very transformative feeling when it's held on your hands when you realize what Casio is capable of. It's surprisingly comfortable but incredibly solid feeling on the skin. It's truly refreshing to touch this level of refinement compared to the ruggedness I'm used to. Like with many G-Shock squares, it's very easy to strap on to smaller wrists like mine, even though there are some slight overhang on each lug side. The weightless feature of a full titanium watch is even more apparent with this one since it's an electronic module inside and not a mostly metal caliber. 
There is an immediate attraction to the bracelet with its titanium being covered with matte finishes and accented with high polished chamfers. This polish is also extended to the sides of the bracelet to give it a supremely premium quality. These links use very thin push pins that has a metal sleeve portion inside the middle of the link. The clasp has four adjustment holes to accommodate minute sizing variations. Even though the clasp is milled steel, the bridge here is made from base titanium. For a watch with labeled parts, it would have been nice to have a label for the buttons here. It's a missed opportunity. But that's fine, it's a detail I can live without. The showstopper here are the holes on each link of the bracelet. I've never seen this before on any G-Shock. This feature just gives this watch an industrial and mechanical spirit to it that I really love. These holes are also present on the lug area of the case. It's a dirt magnet for sure, just keep that in mind. The case back is covered with a multitude of texts as well, along with a nice matte finished surface that's lined with a glossy chamfer. There are labels on each side to give the watch some proper symmetry, while the light button is painted in red to break this symmetry up with visual interest. All of the buttons are black toned and gloss coated, to match the whole motif of the timepiece. While the holes on the bracelet might be meant to save weight and help your skin breathe, the holes on the bezel is clearly meant to display the technology inside. This fine resin cushion gives G-Shock its legendary shock absorption. This is a clever gimmick that also provides a reason for all the red accents on this piece. The watch proudly displays the serial of the titanium bracelet and the fact that it's DLC coated. Every part is individually labeled. This type of aesthetic is based on Swiss style typography principles where small texts are used as part of the layout and allure of the product. These texts, applied in subtle warm white, is crisply engraved all over the watch. Each text reacts differently on the varying surface treatments such as this contrasting bezel facets. This is a very appealing design choice from Casio. Of course, being a G-Shock, you are treated to a number of watch modes for the ultimate in functionality. This comes with a stopwatch, world time, timer, and alarms. It also has a multi-date format, multi-band 6, tough solar, and Bluetooth connectivity. As with many G-Shock squares, the buttons may need a little effort to press. Let's now examine it a little closer and see if it can hold up to deeper scrutiny. The text all over the watch is laser sharp and understandably so. These texts are in fact laser etched and not printed on. This same technology was employed by Casio on their Tron metal square that's both precise and impervious to rubbing off. Paired with the DLC coating, and you have a really tough G-Shock that can handle any situation. Another praiseworthy aspect of this square is the very even finish of the titanium parts. All of the edges are clearly defined. Up close, even the drilled link holes are properly smoothed out, a challenge to do for multiple titanium parts. Like with many luxury watches in the market, light play is a part of the selling point for this G-Shock. Despite this, it never loses its main purpose of function. Securing the clasp is easy and deliberate. It's secure and enforcing your confidence. Sizing is also easy with the markers also present behind the link. The bezel edges are also very sharp, providing adequate contrast from some of the softer bevels. From the side, you can also see the light button is not only painted red on the top, but also recessed and painted on the side. For G-Shock, it definitely displays its value when held to the same standards as other luxury watches in the price point. But how does it compare against other G-Shocks? Against the regular DW5600, the disparity is vast. It's very different in feel and quality. We're comparing resin to metal here after all. The notches on the bezel of the DW5600 does extend its thickness versus the TVAs. The module on the 5600 is also rather rudimentary. 
Against the GWB5600, the functions are a little bit closer with both having multiple connectivity options. The buttons are noticeably larger and the thickness is a tad slimmer for the TVA. The V5600's negative display does inspire an LCD swap for other options such as red, but that's reserved for the braver souls out there. And of course, the TVA has a more premium case bag as well. Finally, let's take a look at the newer DWE models with their interchangeable parts. They look very similar with some minor differences. There are no lug screws and they also have a carbon core inner body. This is a little thicker too. Notice that they still have the closed off holes for the buttons while the TVA and other metal squares have openings from below the bezel. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you don't, Casio will stop making watches forever because of you. Oh, and we also have an Instagram. I do have another Metal G-Shock and it's the AWM500. The metal bracelet between the two bears some striking similarities. There are polished chamfers for all the middle parts of the link and I wouldn't be surprised if Casio used the same steel clasp on the TVA. It would have been nice to have a titanium clasp as well though. The back part is also similar with screw down case back and that unique lug connection. And finally, let's put this one beside the new metal Cassie Oaks because, well, why not? I have it lying around. From the side, we can see the same open bezel configuration for the buttons. The GM2100 is without a doubt slimmer in thickness, which is a selling point for that collection. There's less love given for the back of the GM2100, but I'm sure it will have a screwed case back as well once we get the full metal version. I'm sure we'll see the inevitable comparisons against other metal squares, but I'm sure there is nothing like this GMWB5000 TVA. We can, however, compare this with the other titanium squares in the area of price point. The current alternatives for the TVA are the Blue Camel, Trantrixy, and TFC-1. The cheaper alternative is the TFC coming in at 2100 It looks just like your typical G-Shock Square and that's a good thing or bad depending on how you view it. The Trantrixy model is a lot more exotic for the same price, but maybe too exotic for everyone's taste. If you find the TVH design a little too niche, this one is a lot more so. Then you have the blue camo which is the other titanium square champion. This is the standard and toss up option against the TVA. The burning question from our previous video was, is the price worth it? If you're looking for an all titanium watch, there are other options in the micro brand scene that offers the hardware at as little as two tenths of this price. In that case, it's a no. If you just need a G-Shock, I'm just happy you made it this far in the video, but you're better off spending the next 3 hours choosing which G-Shock to get in Amazon this next Black Friday. If you're going to sit down and calculate the cost of each of these parts and module, then this thing is severely overpriced. I'd want a better module, that class better be made from titanium as well, and it better transform into a robot while it's at it. But this is the greatest G-Shock ever made, because it was able to negotiate to my heart than to my rational noggin. For designers like me, it's like a live action anime done with a bigger budget without all of the hemi voice acting. You can wear it casually without attracting too much attention. And for those who could notice, you don't have to explain yourself because the darn thing could actually do it itself. It's a science fiction watch without all of the branding. It's a fine balance of accent white and sparse red with meticulous applications of fine finishing. It is still like having a tank with MacGyver driving in it. If you don't know who MacGyver is, both the internet and your grandpa can help you out. It's still the same all around everyday tool you can wear all year around. 
It's just reimagined for the rest of a space marine fighting against xenomorphs in the not so distant future. This G-Shock is for geeks out there like me, a small quirky few who loves these very specific tastes. That small few of you will secretly agree with me, have bought it already, and will store it right next to your Speedmaster Snoopy. But for the larger, more sensible portion of you out there, it's an interesting G-Shock that simply isn't for you.